Welcome to Choosing the Right Camera and Lens for Your Security Application, a training seminar brought to you by Tamron, New Eyes for Industry. There are several important considerations to keep in mind when selecting a camera for your security application. The first section of this seminar examines each of these considerations in detail. There are two main types of cameras, box cameras and dome cameras. Box cameras are not restricted in the size of the lens and can be equipped with long-range lenses to cover long distances. This is an important consideration in outdoor applications. Box cameras are generally large and conspicuous, providing added crime deterrent value to your security system. Dome cameras are generally more compact than box cameras, but this also limits the size of the lens. It is important to remember that some long-range lenses may be too large to fit inside a dome camera. Dome cameras can be effective crime deterrents because the direction of the lens is often not visible, making it difficult to guess the area of coverage. Once you have decided on the type of camera to use in your security application, you can consider the type of camera housing you will need. If your camera will be exposed to harsh environments or extreme temperatures, you may need a temperature-controlled housing to protect the camera. A wiper or defroster may also be necessary in cold environments. If the camera will be in an exposed area where it could become a target for vandalism, you may want to consider installing a vandal-proof housing on your camera. A day and night camera can take images in complete darkness using infrared. If you decide that you will need a day and night camera, Consider the amount of ambient infrared illumination that is available. If little or no infrared illumination is available for your application, you will need a source of infrared illumination in addition to your camera. Be sure that you have considered the range of your target when determining the type and amount of infrared illumination you will need. Next, you will have to decide how your camera should transmit image data. Most security cameras in the world today are analog cameras. Analog cameras convert the images into a video signal that can be received by a television, monitor, or VCR. Analog cameras are popular because they are inexpensive and also because they use standardized video signal formats that are compatible with almost all analog recording systems and monitors. A drawback of analog signals is that they are susceptible to interference and noise and also cannot be encrypted, making analog cameras a poor choice if privacy or access control is a concern. IP stands for Internet Protocol. IP cameras convert the images into a digital signal that can be sent over the Internet or stored on a hard disk. Although generally more expensive than analog cameras, IP cameras enable remote security because the digital signal can be carried over long distances. The signal can also be encrypted to restrict access to the images. IP cameras compress images using a variety of compression standards, so it is important to make sure that the IP camera you choose is compatible with your recording system. Camera resolution is a measure of the amount of information contained in the image and is commonly measured in number of pixels. A pixel is a single dot of color information in the image and the color information from all the pixels make up the full image. The term mega means million, and a 3 megapixel camera has 3 million pixels. In order to determine the number of pixels you will need for your application, you will need to know how big your area of interest is, and how many pixels you will need to represent that area. To calculate the number of pixels you will need, divide the number of pixels you need in your area of interest by the fraction of the entire image that area represents. Frame rate is a measure of the smoothness of the video signal and is measured in frames per second, or FPS. A higher frame rate will result in smoother motion capture, but will also increase the amount of image data that needs to be transmitted. For applications where there is little movement, a slower frame rate may be sufficient. For applications where action capture is important, you will need at least 30 frames per second. Once you have decided on a camera, you will need to decide on a lens to go with it. This section of the seminar will take you step by step through the various considerations in choosing a lens and will help you find the lens that is right for your application. The mount refers to the mechanical attachment between the camera and the lens. 
There are two common types of mounts for box cameras, C mount and CS mount. The difference between the two lies in the distance from the contact point of the camera and the lens to the camera imager. This distance is 17.5 mm for C mount and 12.5 mm for CS mount. Generally, a C mount lens is used on a C mount camera and a CS mount lens is used on a CS mount camera. A C mount lens can be used on a CS mount camera using an adapter ring. The adapter ring serves to increase the distance between the lens and the camera so that the image produced by the lens is aligned with the imager. It is not possible to use a CS mount lens with a C mount camera. If you are using a C mount camera, you must keep in mind that your choice of lenses is limited to C mount lenses only. Dome cameras sometimes require a custom mount that is neither C nor CS mount. If you are using a dome camera that requires a lens with a custom mount, contact your lens manufacturer for detailed information on the type of lens you will need. Different cameras are equipped with different imager sizes depending on the type of imager and the number of pixels. Standard imager sizes are referred to in units of inches, although this is not an accurate indication of the actual size of the imager. The dimensions of three common imager sizes are shown here. Lenses are designed to focus an image onto the imager so that the diameter of the image circle matches the diagonal of the imager. A 1 3rd inch lens therefore has an image circle diameter of at least 6 mm to cover the 6 mm diagonal of the 1 3rd inch imager. A larger lens can be used on a smaller imager. In this case, because the image captured by the lens will be larger than the imager, the angle of view of the image will become smaller, resulting in a telephoto effect. A smaller lens can also be used on a larger imager. In this case, because the image captured by the lens will be smaller than the imager, some pixels on the imager will not be illuminated by the image and will appear black. The focal length of a lens is usually measured in millimeters and determines the lens's angle of view. A short focal length provides a wide angle of view and a long focal length provides a telephoto view. A lens can be either fixed focal, providing only one fixed angle of view, or verifocal, allowing adjustment of the angle of view over a specific range. For an angle of view of 90 degrees or more, select a focal length of less than 3 millimeters. If the target area is small or far away, select a longer focal length. In order to calculate the exact focal length you will need for your security application, you will need three pieces of information. The first is the distance between the lens and the target you wish to capture. You will also need to know the physical size of your target. And finally, you will need to know the size of the imager in your camera. Once you have these three pieces of information, you can use the Tamron Online Lens Calculator to find an appropriate lens for your application. The Tamron Online Lens Calculator is located at the address shown here. The F number of a lens is a measure of the light gathering power of the lens. A lens with a smaller F number 
has higher light gathering power and will deliver a bright image. A lens with a larger F number has lower light gathering power and will deliver a darker image. The F number of a lens is related to the required exposure time to obtain a clear image and for this reason the light gathering power of a lens is sometimes called the lens speed. A lens with a smaller F number requires less exposure time to obtain a clear image and can also be called a fast lens. The F number is calculated by dividing the focal length of a lens by the effective diameter. Some commonly seen F numbers in the security industry are shown here. To compare the light gathering powers of two lenses, compare the ratio of the squares of the F numbers. To compare a lens with an F number of 1.0 with a lens with an F number of 1.4, take the ratio 1.4 squared over 1.0 squared to obtain 2. This tells us that the lens with the F number of 1.0 has twice the light gathering power of the lens with the F number of 1.4 and will provide an image that is twice as bright.